Tristana has very quickly become the powerhouse ADC in the meta for high elo players. Nerfs to other ADCs and a ton of indirect buffs to her are making her a nearly unstoppable force who manages to score kills left and right every single game. So in this guide, we're going to cover one of her biggest strengths, her ability to score early kills. We'll be walking you through what high elo players do to secure first blood and what low elo players do wrong, which makes Tristana seem like a balanced champion. But first, our question of the day. Do you think Guardian Angel should have 20% crit added onto it? In my opinion, it feels really bad when you need 5 crit items to reach 100% crit now. Sure, it's great that so many new items give you the stat, but now it feels awful building any item that doesn't offer it. GA is the anti-assassin item for ADCs, and not offering crit seems a bit silly. Sonya's Hourglass for mages gives them all the stats they want, so it'd only be fair for ADCs to get those benefits as well on one of their core defensive items. But that's just my opinion. Let us know what you think in the comments whether that would make GA too OP or maybe strong enough to make it worth buying again. Alright, so the mechanics of getting off an early all-in on Tristana are pretty simple. You just jump into your opponent, E them, and blast them with auto attacks. There's not really much to the actual execution of the kill. So instead of the mechanics, we'll be focusing on how to actually set things up so that you're able to go for those plays in the first place. We'll also be covering some overly common problems that we see players face on her, which prevent them from popping off with early kills. First things first though, what should you play Tristana with? This is pretty simple. If you're looking to score early kills, then she is by far best paired with an engaged support. That being said, the reason Tristana is a powerhouse pick right now is her versatility. Not only is she able to play super aggressively with engaged supports, but she can scale and play safely too with typical ranged champions. And we'll cover some strategies that you can apply with them as well later on in the guide. But we're here to get early kills, and the most important tip for doing that is to immediately communicate to your jungler that you'd rather not leash for them. Obviously this won't always be possible, but you should try and ask if they can go for either a leashless start or start on the other side of the map. Getting to the wave second as Tristana creates a very bad snowball effect for the lane. She is a short range champion and will naturally get zoned by most ADCs and pushed off the wave. If you're zoned, then you obviously can't spike level 2 for her classic all in with E and W. It's not like she outright loses the lane by leashing and losing early priority, but you're losing one of the biggest strengths of the champion by being pushed in early on. Not only that, but being shoved into your tower is a horrible feeling as Tristana. She is very likely the worst champion in the game when it comes to CSing under tower early on due to her E, which makes her fall behind even more. So long story short. Try not to leech. It's very important for you to be in lane early so you can establish wave control to actually look for all ends. As a quick reminder, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out our hyper improvement system at skillcap.com. We have professional courses by the top players, smurf commentaries where a challenger player walks you through how to climb out of every rank from iron to diamond, and we upload tons of new exclusive guides to our website every week. In fact, we're so confident you'll improve using our system that if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using skill capped, you can claim a full refund so there's no risk. What are you waiting for? Check out skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. Okay, so we've established that we want to be in lane early to get wave control and get the push. The problem is many Tristanas mess that part up and miss their kill opportunities because of it. So if you don't know, a common tip that we'll give players is to not level abilities until you actually need them. As an example for another ADC, let's say that Jinx just hit level 2 with a Leona. Jinx goes Q at level 1, so now she has the option between W or E. Well, both abilities have their uses depending on what actually happens. If Leona manages to get an all-in, Jinx E is very valuable for following up on her CC and chaining their opponents into a kill. But if Leona doesn't find an all-in, Jinx W is better for getting long-range poke or farming from far away. The problem players make is they instantly level abilities when they level up. That doesn't leave you much room for adapting to the situation. It's better to hold your skill point until you're 100% going to use that spell. We bring this up because that tip is pivotal to play Tristana correctly. Her E is an automatic wave push mechanic, 
Once you've leveled it, you can't stop pushing, and this problem costs a lot of Tristana players many kills during the early game. Take a look at how it costs even this high elo Tristana player a ton of kill pressure to make this mistake. To be fair to this Trist, she was holding her first ability, but she was too quick to pull the trigger on leveling E when her Nautilus found a random auto attack on the Gragas. This mistake will cost her any hope of an early kill that she may have had. Now the wave is pushing so quickly into the enemy Ezreal and Gragas that they can just chill at their tower and wait for it to crash. Tristana's automatic shoving forces her to do the notorious push 2 into nothing strategy. Basically, crashing on the second wave in the game literally gives you no options. You can't dive, recall, roam, etc. It's usually just awful to do in most lanes. Normally, in most lanes, you could use the bounce back slow push to potentially look for an all in. The wave would typically push to the red team's side here since it's closer to the blue team's side. But again, Tristana auto pushes with her E, which means that cannot happen either if Ezreal just last hits minions. And then that means that the wave is going to keep pushing into Ezreal over and over again. He can stay at the safety of his tower forever, which gives the deadly Tristana Nautilus combo absolutely zero kill pressure for the entire early laning phase. This all stems from leveling her E here. Do you see now why that's such a critical mistake? Against players that realize you can't stop auto shoving, it will allow them to play safe forever, denying you of your strong early spike. Alright, let's take a look at an example where an early skill point is justified. Here's a game from C9 Sven playing Tristana Leona, a lane that definitely looks to get early kills. Just like the previous Tristana, he's holding his E during the first few seconds of the lane. And just like the other Tristana, he also skills it up almost instantly in the lane. There's a massive difference though, based on how this Ezreal is playing. It's much more clear here when only the caster minions are left. Do you see the big minion lead Ezreal had over Tristana? Sven knew he had to level E in order to get wave control back here. He also knew that even if Ezreal completely stopped auto attacking right now, that the wave won't push too quickly toward Ezreal and it will give him plenty of time to find an all in unlike the previous game. We have skipped ahead nearly a minute and notice how much longer the wave is held outside of Ez's tower. He's not nearly as safe as the previous Ezreal was. With the wave not hitting his tower for a while, it eventually gives Leona an all-in opportunity which instantly results in a kill thanks to Tristana's powerful early all-in. Alright, so there's one crucial bit of information that you need to know to make your early game successful as Tristana. One issue is that players are aware of how strong Trista's early game is. Even with a ranged support, Tristana's early all-in can still be deadly. Therefore, a lot of players usually just play safe and respectfully until the wave crashes into their tower. Like we said before, this poses a problem. Even though you crashed a wave as Tristana, it won't actually bounce back to you easily because of your ease auto push. This is a very easy problem to fix though, and to see how, let's watch how the rest of this game featuring Reckless plays out. Even gods can make mistakes, and Reckless just made a big one. Based on what you've learned, can you tell what he did wrong? Committing to leveling E is a big mistake, but so is walking this far forward in the lane to zone the Zaya. He's been tanking all the red creep aggro, so the wave is going to push even faster toward her. Of course, he's reckless and immediately recognized his own mistake. On the following wave, he's pushing as slowly as he possibly can to remedy the situation. But alas, the second wave ended up feebly crashing into the enemy tower. Okay, so we've talked about how crashing on the second wave sucks. So here's another question, what should you be trying to do instead? Crashing on the third wave and recalling is the correct answer. Despite his error, Reckless still tries to salvage the situation by going for a very scuffed cheetah recall to see if he can still pull it off. The point that we wanted to make from this replay is that Reckless is going to luck out thanks to his support. His Janna is actually competent and stayed in lane to hold the wave and cancel the enemy duo's bases. She then walks forward to bait Nautilus, which allows Reckless to show off the early power of Tristana by basically one-shotting a tank support. So, keep in mind that you won't have this Janna. Reckless messed up the recall and his support salvaged the entire situation. The takeaway here is to learn from his mistake. Don't go overly aggressive when starting E on Tristana. If you have a ranged support or your opponent is playing really safe, then slow push the first three waves. 
If your opponents are playing really safe, then it goes without saying that it's guaranteed that you'll get a nice and big crash on the third wave. Cheater recalls on Tristana are incredibly potent. The reason being is that it fixes a lot of the issues that she has by crashing waves. By being away from lane so long while you recall, she won't be auto-shoving the wave that is bouncing back to her. That means that when she does get back, the wave will be stacked on her side of the lane. She can very easily thin it with her E, and then once the waves are equalized, she can go back to looking for all ins with her extra item. Okay, so the last thing that we want to cover is how you're going to primarily be playing with ranged supports. Scoring kills won't be that common without an engaged support, but that's fine and part of what makes Tristana such a powerful meta pick at the moment. With ranged supports, Tristana will just generally switch up her game plan. During the early game, she'll just spam shove waves and use her support's range advantage to poke the enemy ADC under tower. You're basically just looking to scale by getting a farm lead. By spam shoving, you're bound to come out ahead in CS since your opponent will miss CS while under tower being poked down. But there is a small cheese that you can do with ranged supports when your opponents are leashing. Ranged supports are generally very strong when the enemy is walking into them due to their zone of control. Your opponent's walking to lane after leashing is one of the best times in the game where your opponent is forced to walk into you. Now, normally the ranged support and ADC will just get some poke off with this cheese, it's very rare to score kills. But Tristana is built different as the kids say. Once your support chunks down your opponent slightly, you can hard force the issue by starting W and jumping onto the low health target. Basically, your opponent can't get away from your auto range and you slow them down for your support to continue wailing on them at the same time. No other ADC can do that, and it's fairly common how often this works, even in higher elos. Alright, let's wrap things up with the build you'll want to be running. Part of the reason Tristana is so strong is the early power from Hail of Blades, so you'll want to run this rune page. Ravenous Hunter and Bloodline are big priorities so that you're not forced into building a lifesteal item. As for items, your first mythic can be any of the three ADC mythics depending on the situation. Gale Force if you're ahead and want to snowball looking for kills around the map, Kraken Slayer if you feel like you'll need consistent damage, and Immortal Shield Bow when you're against a lot of scary threats on the enemy team. Then your second item is going to be Phantom Dancer. After that, standard crit items depending on what you need is how you'll round off your build and maybe GA if you really need a defensive armor item. Alright, that's going to wrap up everything you need to know to start blasting people as Tristana. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.